Hi, this is Mike with Base Gamer. I'm here with Scott of Flying Helmet Games. And what's your role here? I'm the lead designer on Eon Alter. So Eon Alter is currently in pre-release. Tell us a little bit about your game. Uh, so Eon Alter is a one to four player couch co-op role playing game. Uh, we've been in development now for about a year and a half, and we're proud to say we just launched uh, our early access campaign on Steam. What makes your game unique? So the thing that makes our game unique is that you actually play it with a mobile device. You download the app for free on uh, either the Google Play or App Store. We've been developing games for quite some time. We all came from various studios, but we decided we really wanted to make a cooperative game. Uh, something that you get together with your friends, play on the couch, um, get some pizza, get some beer, play together. Uh, that's kind of our genesis as, as ga gamers and friends. The reason we use the controller is it actually, uh, sorry, the, the handset for a controller is it actually gives us access to a lot of really interesting game design options. Um, in our game, we have a really rich narrative. You've got these five heroes who are on the journey of the Eon Altar. Um, so they're on this epic quest to go down through these caves to find this, this uh, strange artifact. They all have their own reasons for wanting to get there, um, but they're going to have to work together if they're going to succeed. So uh, on your device, you actually control one of these heroes. And as you're controlling this hero, uh, you actually, on your device, get your own hero's thoughts, your own hero's observations, uh, your own hero's personal quests. And sometimes these quests and observations are going to put you at odds with your, your other friends. Because you're playing locally on a couch, that means you can do things like, uh, like maybe keep some secrets, maybe uh, uh, cause some misdirection, try and run ahead and steal the loot they might not know about. Um, it really just uh, gives us a lot of options for really interesting uh, narrative and dialogue. Awesome. So the character communication, like they can tell you secrets about what's going on in the game or give you insight? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you can choose to share that stuff. I mean, we've got gaming groups that really like to be cooperative. They'll work together. That's great. But sometimes you have, uh, you have friends that kind of like to screw each other over. And that's fine, too. On the couch, that's really easy because if you don't like them, you can just punch them in the arm. And what kind of interesting mechanics can we expect using the tablet or the touchscreen? Yeah, so on the, uh, on the tablet, you use it to control your character. Uh, so, it, really simply, it acts like a controller. It's like almost like a mouse cursor. You can mouse over things and get more information about them. Um, additionally, because it, you have your own little device, it also gives you access to your character's stats, your character progression, your gear, all that stuff you do locally. So it doesn't really clutter up the main screen. It means that the main screen kind of stays like the presentation mode of the game. Tell me a little bit about uh, combat in the game. So our combat is really interesting. We've done uh, what we call team turn-based. So the enemies go, and then it's the player's, uh, player's turn. And they all kind of go at the same time. So uh, it's really up to the players to choose what order they're going to go in. Um, it's all like uh, real time. So it's possible that like two characters might be able to, uh, to target the same enemy at the same time. But the cool thing is that uh, our powers are actually uh, designed in such a way that you might actually uh, benefit more if you wait until one of the other guys does his move. You might want to buff an ally before you make an attack, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, later in the game, uh, that strategy comes to comes to the forefront. When you'll have to use cooperation and strategy together in order to get through. Absolutely, but the game isn't all about combat. We also have, like I said, a rich narrative. There's a, a rich story that takes place over the course of nine episodes. Um, as I said, we're in early access right now. Uh, our first episode is available. It's uh, 4.99 on Steam. Um, that's about five hours of gameplay, so you can see that over nine, uh, nine episodes, that, that adds up to a lot of gameplay, um, probably a couple weekends of gaming with your buddies. Um, also in our game, we've got a lot of um, uh, puzzles, there's a lot more strategy, um, uh, loot and treasure traps, um, really uh, inspired by games like Dungeons and Dragons and Gauntlet Legends and uh, Diablo 3, that sort of thing. So anybody who really likes those types of role-playing games is going to have a, a lot of fun playing on Altar. Sounds like you got a lot of really great influences. Uh, tell me about your dev team. You said you have people from all over the place. Where are they coming from? Yeah, so um, I actually worked for Electronic Arts for quite some time. Our executive producer worked for uh, Ubisoft and uh, BioWare. Um, we have uh, uh, a dev, uh, our senior programmer actually worked for Microsoft for quite some time. So we all work for some pretty big companies, um, but uh, we decided to, to kind of come back together. A lot of us went to high school together, actually 15 years ago. And uh, so we decided it was actually time to come together and uh, try something indie. Really great. Do you have any advice for aspiring devs out there? Absolutely. I would say um, uh, right now is the, awesome, the awesomest time to actually try and make indie games. There are engines out there that are free. You can start learning right away. Um, it does not take a lot of effort to really learn how to start making games. Um, the only other advice I would say is um, make sure that you uh, always remind yourself that the, the reason you make games is because you want to have fun. It is so easy as an indie dev to get bogged down and, and like just really hate the work that you're doing. It gets frustrating, trust me. But if you're making indie games, I would say stick with it and remember the goal is to have fun.
Thank you so much for that, Ian Alter. Uh, first episode's on Steam. Expecting a second episode soon. Thank you so much.